Good morning to all. I'm Sumitra, working as an associate professor in RMD Engineering College. And now in this video, I'm going to explain about uh, the steps getting involved in planning. So we all know that planning is the uh, primary managerial functions. And what are the steps now getting involved in a proper planning of a management? So in the uh, previous video, I've explained what is the nature of planning and uh, how what are the factors getting involved in uh, coming up with a proper planning and all. So now what are the steps in if we are uh, proceeding the steps in proper manner, then we can able to achieve the objectives. And now in this video, let me explain about the different steps getting involved. So uh, we all know that planning is a process and it contains number of steps within it. And it is not necessary whatever steps uh, that a particular planning process is having is valid for all the organizations or all types of plans, right? So planning process which is suitable for large scale organization may not be suitable for a small scale organization since various factors getting involved in planning process may differ from plan to plan or from a firm to firm. So the planning process or steps are most uh, mostly applicable for major programs. So the first and the primary step getting involved in planning is that identification of opportunities that is being aware of planning that is market competition customer strength and weakness. So in general, we can say we have to do a SWOT analysis. SWOT is nothing but strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So before planning or before taking a decision, we need to do a SWOT analysis, which involves the strength, weakness, opportunities, and the threats. So the first step in planning is the identification of opportunities. So identification of awareness of the opportunities is the starting point of planning. So we should identify all the possible future opportunities and analyze those things in a clear and complete manner. So uh, uh, if you are going to identify the possible opportunities, then uh, the following answers will be the questions for the following answers. Will, uh, answer for the following questions will be there. That is where we plan to stand and what are our major strength and weakness and what problem we wish to solve and why and what do we expect to gain. So these are all the questions. If we are assigning or if you're framing a planning in a proper manner then we can able to get the answer for these questions and once the opportunities are perceived from the availability then the other steps of planning is followed one by one so establishment next one is establishment of achievements so establishment of achievements or the goals so which is meant by where we want to be and to what to achieve and when so uh, next in planning is to establish the objectives for the entire organization and then for each subordinate unit, because we all know that organization doesn't getting involved in a single unit. It consists of some number of subunits, sub which are under the control of subordinates. So the next step in planning is to establish the objectives for the entire organization and for also each subordinate unit. So objectives specify and indicate the results, what to be expected. So like uh, what is to be done and where is the primary emphasis to be placed and what is to be accomplished by the various types of plans like that, uh, it will be uh, giving the relation. And next one is that uh, overall objectives are set which shape the structure of other subsidiary uh, objectives in an organization. Uh, even though they are getting divided into departmental or sectional or individual objectives, so overall objectivities will give a direction to the nature of the plans of the major departments, right? So the first one is uh, identification of the opportunities. After identifying the opportunities, we need to frame the objectives in a well-defined manner so that we need to know where we want to be and what to achieve and when to achieve, right? And next one is developing the planning premises. Uh, so that is whether the environment is regarding the internal environment or external environment or whatever scenario our organization is facing, it has to develop a planning premises. So these are the mere assumptions from which we should make about the various elements of the environment. Uh, or in other words, we can say this will provide a basic framework in which the plans are uh, operated. So uh, internal internal premises includes the organizational. We all know that internal factors which are getting uh, affecting your organizations are nothing but the policies, regulations, uh, regulations, and then uh, sale forecast and the ability of the organization. All these are going to get coming under the internal environmental pressure. Whereas the external premises, which includes that factors like the political, economic condition, economic condition of the country, and then socio-culture, political and legal. So all these factors are going to affect the um, 
organization performance in which are lying outside that is due to external environment factors so the plans are formulated on the basis of both internal and external premises so the nature of the planning premises differs at the different levels of planning at the top level it is mostly externally focused whereas it is internally focused at the bottom level so the first one is we need to identify what are the opportunities and threats available and based on that we need to establish the objectives and after establishing the objectives we have to uh, plan the premises considering both the internal and environment external environmental factors so after identifying we need to evaluate how the alternatives are achieved so the alternatives considered for the analysis according to the criteria it may be taken for further evaluation so each course of action is evaluated on the basis of probability and capital investment risk involved and gestation period that is stipulate a period we need to complete the task so and so like that so the task manager and the time manager will give the stipulated time for completing the task so all these things we need to evaluate so it presents a problem because each of these alternatives may have certain advantages and disadvantages so for example an alternative may appear to be most profitable but it it is not to be expected in all scenario so it requires a large cash outlet with slow payback and other may be less profitable but it involves less risk factors also so in case of evaluating the alternatives um, some intangible factors like uh, uh public relations goodwill of the company employee moral personal relations these are need to needed to be considered so moreover there is no certainty about the outcome of the alternative because all these things are getting related with the future and future is uh, obviously uncertain so thus the evaluation work becomes more and more complex so we need to provide or select a sophisticated technique of planning and decision making such that it will um, meet the evaluations of the alternatives in all prescribed phenomena then uh, selecting the best course of action followed by the evaluating we need to selecting a best course of action so after evaluating the various alternatives the most appropriate course of action is selected for example if there exists more than one alternative as a suitable one then many alternatives may be chosen for execution when the situation changes and then the selected plan doesn't provide to be the best the other alternative may be tried so in this way we can select a particular course after evaluating the alternative courses if there exists number of suitable course of action for achieving the target and then formulation of derivative plans so the derivative plan formulation comes the next step so these are all formulated on the basis of the major plan so there are several minor plans required to support and execute the major plan so these plans are known as the derivative plans and the various variety plans of planning for buying like uh, buying equipment and buying the raw material and uh, recruiting the staff members and training those members for that particular field and developing new products also so these are all coming under the derivative plans and then establishing a sequence of activities is the next step so after formulating the basic and the derivative plans the sequence of activities is to be determined so that the plans are put into action accordingly so while formulating a derivative plan a built in mechanism should be created for a, a periodic review and for updating the various plans wherever it's necessary so the starting and finishing time uh, the starting and finishing times are fixed for each task so as to indicate that when and what time the work has to be started and completed so these are all the various steps getting involved in planning so in my next video i'll be explaining about what are the different types of planning available so thank you all